Welcome. So welcome everybody. Welcome back to Muslim Spaces series entitled or titled um, Inside Islam. This is our 10th episode, which is kind of cool in and of itself. Um, and just a little background on this program. So Inside Islam is a monthly intra-faith series created by Muslim Space for the purpose of focusing on the diverse communities of beliefs and sects within Islam. These conversations um, happen in the form of a short informative lecture um, by respected scholars and members of each respective community, and then followed by a short question and answer session. Um, tonight, we are graced with the presence of Isra Shima, who is a queer Pakistani Muslim poet from the heart of Oklahoma. She's currently an MFA poetry candidate at Texas State University and is the poetry editor of Porter Porterhouse Review. She's the founder of Queer Muslims of ATX and can be found on Twitter and Instagram at Tira Miss Roo. I will drop that handle in the chat box. Um, but without further ado, I want to pass it on to Isra. Thank you, Shadia. It's so lovely to be here. Um, thank you for having me. And I am going to get started with sharing my screen. All right. Hopefully everyone can see that. And I am going to just move this over and hit present. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I am Isra Chima, as Shadia said. Um, my pronouns are she, they. And I am the founder of Queer Muslims of ATX. Um, and so we're gonna get into what that is. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was, I took this from the Muslim space guiding principle for this dialogue, um, just as a, to set the, the tone and the mood of this dialogue. Um, but Muslim space has said that um, in this in this principle, basically, Islam is diverse and inclusive and whoever recites the Shahada is Muslim and only Allah can judge what is in the hearts. The more we know about each other, the more we can learn from each other and embrace one another. And I just wanted to reiterate that before we begin um, talking. So we're Muslims of ATX. Who are we? How did we come to be? Queer Muslims of ATX is a community group and space that works to support, empower, and connect LGBTQ plus Muslims in the Central Texas area. Um, that includes Austin, San Antonio, and we've even had people come down from Dallas to join us at some events. We center our events in meetups around inclusion and community. And this venture started um, because I was looking for community. Um, and it's difficult as a queer Muslim to find other queer Muslims. Um, and I had joined a group of um, Desi queer people in Austin. So like South Asian queer people in Austin, um, but it wasn't particularly Muslim. Um, it was, People of all different faiths, um, primarily um, Hindus and Sikhs, and there were a couple of Muslims. And um, I didn't feel I didn't feel the most seen, to be honest. And I think that's because being queer and Muslim is such an interesting <laughs> niche space. Um, and so I said, I'm going to make my own community. Um, and I started Queer Muslims of ATX, and here we are. It's been about a year, I want to say about a year, maybe a year and a half, a year. 
Um, and we try to meet up at least once a month with different different kinds of events. Um, we do um, casual hangouts at coffee shops just to get to know each other. We did a Halloween party, which was fun. Um, and then recently during Ramadan, we did a Queer Muslims Iftar, um, which was the most beautiful event because we all just got together and ate food, broke our fasts, and we're just in community. And I think that's um, that's the main goal of Queer Muslims of ATX is just for queer Muslims to find community and be in spaces, a space where they feel um, they can be their, their truest selves. Okay. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is go over misconceptions um, about queer Muslims. Um, and so the format of this is I state the misconception and then I respond um, with a question and I'll get to that. Um, and that is to just um, encourage different perspectives um, in thinking about these misconceptions um, and where they may come from. So the first misconception is that queer folks can't be Muslim and Muslims can't be queer. Um, and I can tell you that that is not true. <laughs> um, let's see. Here we go. So the question that I have here is how do we make a world where people don't take their lives because they feel like they can't reconcile being queer and Muslim? And it comes with knowing that queer people are born within every demographic of the world. There are queer Jews, queer Mormons, queer Catholics, queer Protestants, and queer Muslims. Um, and I think the first step in making a more inclusive world is recognizing that there are queer Muslims and not erasing them from our community spaces. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us with all of our flaws and imperfections. And Allah also made some of us to be queer Muslims because Allah makes no mistakes. We know that the divine is divine <laughs> and does not make mistakes. And so some Muslims being queer was decided and written before we were even born. All right. Now we're moving on to misconception number two. Queer Muslims believe homosexuality is a sin. All right. So the question I have here is how do queer Muslims reconcile being queer and being Muslim when those two identities are conflicting? Point blank, we don't reconcile identities. Um, for us, there is nothing to reconcile. I want to say at this point that I am not a scholar. Um, I'm just a queer Muslim woman who aims to build community and leads her life in, you know, believing in my own way. And I am Muslim, um, but, you know, we're having this this dialogue and and we can understand that maybe there are people in the world, Muslims in the world, who wouldn't consider queer people to be Muslims. Um, but for us, there is no there is no reconciling, there is no reckoning with being queer and Muslim. Um, and there are some opinions among scholars in Islam that homosexuality is in fact not a sin. And most queer Muslims and specifically us at Queer Muslims of ATX choose to believe that opinion. And so when we come together um, in community, in our meetups, in our, in, our, in our spaces, we don't move from a place of we're all sinning, if that makes sense. We move from a place of we're all human beings and we are trying our best to be the best people we can be. And we are human, so we love. And who we love does not affect um, the support in the community that we have in the space. If anything, when there are queer Muslims, you know, I encourage people to bring their partners um, because it can be scary to show up to these spaces and not know who's going to be there, um, who's going to be supportive. I totally understand that safety is a big 
concern for a lot of people in the group. Um, and for that reason, we, you know, tend to keep locations disclosed. Uh, we only disclose locations once people are SVP um, and once people are, are vetted and they fill out, you know, a certain form and that kind of thing. Um, being queer and Muslim is, is not the safest <laughs> identity, honestly. Um, and so this space is meant to be safe and supportive to all queer Muslims. And so that includes trans Muslims, that includes queer Muslims who have same-sex loving relationships um, and so on. All right, so a small note, some queer Muslims do believe that homosexuality is a sin and they abstain from it as much as possible, remain celibate, that kind of thing. And we re recognize and respect that point of view. Um, there are so many different ways to be Muslim, as I'm sure many of you know from listening to these Inside Islam series sessions. Um, there are so many different kinds of Muslims. And at the end of the day, when we believe in Allah and when we believe in the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, being the last messenger, we're Muslim. Um, and Islam is in the heart and only Allah can decide whether that heart is is full of good or otherwise. Um, and so what we don't tolerate as queer Muslims and queer Muslims of ATX is homophobia, hate crimes against queer folks and takfiring, which is a little Arabic English word I put together. Um, takfir in Arabic um, means essentially damning someone to hell. And so oftentimes queer Muslims will hear from other Muslims, straight Muslims, that they will be going to hell. Um, and we definitely don't tolerate that because there is no human being on earth who decides who goes to hell and who goes to heaven. That is Allah's decision alone. Um, and again, our relationship with God is, is in our hearts and souls and nobody can, no human can visually see that. And so there's the question, what about the story of the people of Prophet Lut that many people ask? Um, some scholars in Islam agree that they were not acting on homosexuality and homosexual thoughts. Rather, they were committing horrific acts of rape and incest, causing trauma and pain. And I recognize that not that's not the majority opinion. Many scholars of Islam say that they were acting um, on homosexual desire but um, kind of like I said before, like we believe that God makes no mistakes and we believe that um, we question everything that we're told, right? I think me personally, especially um, when I, as I grew up and became an adult, I certainly questioned where the information I was being fed came from who where did the where was the, the chain of and who taught me that um and getting older becoming an adult made me realize that there's so many different opinions and viewpoints and ways of living um and that there's just not one way of living and believing in Islam and and interpreting the Quran um and so we don't believe, queer Muslims of ATX at least, um, we don't believe, we believe that they were committing, you know, rape and incest instead of just homosexual relations. And the, the point I want to drive is that they were causing trauma and pain. Um, and I want to make it clear that same gender loving relationships don't cause trauma and pain. What causes trauma and pain and often mental illness is having to hide parts of yourself from your loved ones and the world. It's being invisible, being unseen. It's being told over and over again that you're going to hell for who you are and who you love. Um, and that's what, what causes that trauma and pain. And I think that's the point that I want to drive is that same gender loving relationships don't cause that. Um, in fact, it's the opposite. 
Um, and like I said, I'm not a scholar, but what I can do <laughs> is, um, in terms of receipts, is point you to a historical culprit, which goes by the name of colonization. Um, and I want to say that all of these images of quotes were taken from Blair Imani's TED Talk called Queer and Muslim, Nothing to Reconcile, which I re recommend that you all watch. Um, she's very well-spoken. Um, and she mentions how from the earliest contact points between the Christian and Muslim civilizations, Muslims were faulted not so much for their sexual intolerance as they were for their sexual permissiveness. Um, and how they were freer with their sexualities and bodies. Um, and then during the 19th century, as Islamic countries came into contact with European Victorian morality through colonization, local attitudes toward queer identity fundamentally changed. So historically, um, many people have, have documented and believed that the queer identity, the attitudes towards the queer identity was not as it is today, um, meaning that now it's very negative. Um, and something I found especially interesting was that she mentioned the five Islamic countries that do not criminalize LGBTQ plus relationships have a deferring history with colonial forces than that of the countries that do criminalize us. Um, and certainly learning about the after effects of colonization when it comes to patriarchy, misogyny, racism, colorism, we can always, usually we can always point to colonization. And it's no surprise that when it comes to homophobia, um, that that also came from Victorian European attitudes um, that infiltrated people's minds um, through colonization. All right, misconception number three, there aren't many queer Muslims who exist. Um, that's incorrect. I can, I'm proof of that. Um, but the question I have here is how many queer people exist? I can't tell you the exact number, but there are so many of us, um, so many queer people in the world. And there are just as many queer Muslims, I can tell you that. Specifically with our group, Queer Muslims of ATX, there are almost 40 members um, and we continue to grow every day. Um, and that's just honestly the most beautiful thing is beautiful and sad at the same time <laughs> that there are so many queer Muslims who live quietly, silently and don't feel like they don't have space to exist um, in, you know, masajid, in mosques. And I'm just grateful that I'm able to, that I felt that and I made the space for um, other queer Muslims and that we can come together and feel seen and feel heard and feel loved, feel supported and not feel like someone's going to shame us for who we are. Um, and so here on the right, I have some well-known queer Muslims um, with their names and their Instagram tags, if you ever want to go look them up. Um, they're all really lovely um, and different creatives, um, singers, um, models, makeup artists, um, historians, documentarians. Um, yeah, there's there there are so many of us and we are of every color of the rainbow for sure. So Queer Muslims ATX will continue working towards a world where we can be our full selves, like the rainbow that represents us. LGBTQ plus people are beautiful and naturally occurring. Queer Muslims have always existed and we will continue to thrive. And here um, on the last slide, I have love your fellow queer Muslims because we're great. Um, and I have um, the, our information, the email address and the, the tag, the Instagram um, handle. And then I also have my own email address and Instagram handle um, if you ever wanna reach out um, in terms of you know questions or just talking or, or if you know a queer Muslim in the central Texas area, 
send them my way, um, send them our way, and we will welcome them with open arms for sure. Thank you. So uh, thank you, thank you so much for that presentation. I mean, I think it was uh, very heartfelt. It was very eye-opening. I think for folks that maybe aren't so familiar with, um, you know, with queer Muslims and the community in which you have formed. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing. Um, and let me open up the chat box. And I think there's a few comments in there. So. Um, one question is, could you possibly expand on those five countries, um, those five Islamic countries that do not criminalize LGBTQ plus or queer Muslims? Sorry, I was- um, No, no, it's great. Yeah, you were dropping that in the, in the box. Yeah, Thank you. dropping it in the chat box. Um, yes, I really quickly, um, I can- Pull that up, um, but if I, I I can't remember the I wrote it down somewhere, but I can't remember where the exact country is. But I can send a link to the TED Talk, um, and I believe the references are linked there. So I will drop that in the chat, um, so that you can see that. Yes, here it is. Awesome. Thank you. And well, you're going to do that. I don't want to bombard you with all these requests because okay. as seemingly simple as your presentation was, it was jam packed full of resources. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you mentioned, uh, I think, a like a film, like a documentary, was it? Were you um, some of that? So um, one of the, the well-known queer Muslims that I mentioned, um, Fawz Mirza, Maybe I should have left it up longer. Um, there, they are a um, a director and documentarian, and they um, recently put out this like short film about um, queer Muslims, and they they put out um, movies and and films about queer Muslims, which is really cool. Um, I don't know of a of a good documentary about queer Muslims though. And I might I may have I may be misspeaking. I mean I I may have heard you wrong. Um, hmm. Maybe it was a book that you referenced. Again, you had citations on the slides, but uh, I think we just all kind of went through that very quickly. So any yeah. other resources that you have um, would be fantastic. So, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing what you're posting in the chat box, um, but, you know, knowledge is power, right? Knowledge is liberating and diverse knowledge is all of the above. So anything that you can share with, uh, with, the, with the audience would be fantastic. It's something that we can, we can, Put those links in once we put the video up on on our YouTube. Definitely, I'm but, I'm kicking myself because I should have put together like a little a little document of all bibliography. the bibliography. Yes, exactly. Of like <laughs> books, like books about queer Muslims and and TV shows. Oh, there's so many good TV shows. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll I'll put a list of that together. Um, because we've talked about it in our in our meetups too. Like we're all like, what's a good movie about uh like queer people and, and and we you know bond over over that but um I will put together a list for sure and and send that um to you Shadia and then maybe that can be put in like the 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 caption box we'll um see. yeah yeah for sure okay another question in the chat box here it's a great question right what message would you give to parents whose child is queer oh <laughs> That's a good question. Um, just love them. I know that seems so simple and I'm sitting here and I'm like, just love, everybody love. But really like that's, I mean, that's what's going to heal our world at the end of the day. Um, and it's not just like this overarching like love. It's like being understanding, being compassionate, being considerate, being um open to hearing them talk about what they're going through and their feelings. Like it's, it's scary as a child. There's so many big feelings um, in such a little body. And when they don't feel safe talking to their own parents, I mean, who are they going to go to? Who are they going to talk to? Um, 
And so I would say, especially if you're Muslim and your child is, is, a, is a queer Muslim and just came out to you or is having these feelings, then I would say just listen, listen and love them no matter what. Um, you know, I, my own mom, she, um, she's just like, I, I love you and I want you to be happy, um, but doesn't necessarily agree with the way that I live my life. And, you know, it is what it is, but it it's, that's reality for a lot of queer people and, and queer Muslims, I mean, who are estranged from their families and family is such a big part of our, I feel like family is such a big part of Islam and community and people supporting you. And when you don't have that, boy, oh boy, does it feel impossible to live in this world. And so it's a very long-winded answer just to say love them and listen to them. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And I don't think it's a long-winded answer because it's an important question to ask and an important question to address. Uh, and, you know, you brought up a great point, family. You know, we're reminded so often in the Quran, every Friday, you know, it's, it's, it's projected from the pulpit. Do not sever the ties of kith and kin. There's mm -hmm. a reason for that, right? Um, another question in here. What advice would you give to a person who feels alienated from Islam because of the common views about LGBTQ matters? Mm, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, you know, it's tough to answer because I am experiencing it, you know, currently I have been experiencing it. it um, it's difficult. And we talk about it a lot at our meetups with queer Muslims of ATX. Um, like we want to feel like we're part of the, the larger community. Um, we want to be close to God. Um, and it, it, I've, I've been there. <laughs> I am still a little bit there where it's tough when you're sort of just figuring out your faith on your own and your relationship with God on your own, because community is such a big part of religious organizations in general. Um, and I would say to someone who feels alienated from Islam that you are not alone, point blank. You are not alone. And there are other queer Muslims. And when you feel like you don't have community, make your own community. And I know that's scary. I know it's terrifying putting yourself out there. Um, but there are, you know, queer Muslims of ATX is not unique. You know, there are so many different queer Muslims groups in so many different states, so many different cities. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make that list of resources, but um just know that you're not alone and that Allah loves you no matter what, because Allah made you. And so you are loved. That's beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, I, I, I would say that that advice isn't limited to queer Muslims who feel alienated, right? I think that's a good reminder for all of us, um, believers and otherwise, right? right? That we are loved and we have a divine creator who created us and, and loves, loves us, right? Definitely. Um, another question here. So what can the Muslim community do to support queer Muslims? As an average community member, right? What's missing and how uh, can we step up? That's a good question. Um, you know, I think it's, the main thing is just, it's like there's no space for LGBTQ plus Muslims in Islam is like what it feels like because Islam in America is in the masjids, it's in the mosques, it's in the community. And when we can't show up to Jama'a prayer with 
our partner who's the same gender as us like there's it's like we feel so isolated and so separated um from the community and i i wish there was a way you know i want to create a prayer space where maybe queer muslims of atx meets for jama every week that would be really cool um but i think from the average community member as you said support speaking up being an actual ally um i think it people can silently you know be in their homes and and support people but are you you know are you showing up to I don't know, a pride parade. <laughs> Maybe that's not for you, but are you trying to find queer Muslims and be their support? Like, it's not just like being an ally is being there for queer Muslims and, and being, seeing them for who they are and supporting them and inviting them into your homes, making them feel like they are part of your community. They are supported, they are loved and not shaming them for who they are. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I wish there were, I had more tangible ideas, <laughs> but it's tough when Islam is in the masjids um, and that does not feel like a safe space to a lot of queer Muslims, unfortunately. Um, there are, um, I will say, uh, at some queer Muslims events, um, I do say like allies are welcome. So people sometimes bring like a posse, um, they'll bring like their partner and maybe like two friends. Um, and so if you have a queer Muslim friend, um, you know, go to the masjid with them, um, invite them to your house for iftar, that kind of thing. Just be their community member, yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's very helpful. And I think, you know, a lot of what you just said, um, if you took the word queer out and put in any other marginalized, you know, a label of a marginalized Muslim, you'll see that it's the same thing being kind of requested over and over again. Acceptance, mm -hmm. inclusion, not othering, not sort of, you know, looking at this person by one label that they may have, but seeing them as a Muslim, as a community member, as an equal on the same level. Um, and I think that's just a great reminder for everyone. You could take away the word queer and put in any other marginalized, non-dominant label, right? And it's, you'll find that people are seeking the same thing, Absolutely. which again, it's, it's, it, that is something that the normative right? The culturally normative Muslims that they have to take that on that responsibility on, they have to do that legwork because it's mm -hmm. unfair for the marginalized folks to do the legwork. Um, okay. So you, you mentioned, you know, if you've got a queer Muslim, you know, invite them to the mosque, right? What about the other way around? Could a non-queer Muslim, are they welcome at your group events, your meetups, or okay. is it, is it a safe space I mean, I don't want to take away the focus, right? But could any one of us who don't identify as a member of the LGBTQ community participate in your gatherings? Definitely. Um, you know, some of the meetups that we've had are are just for queer Muslims specifically. And then other times, um, like with the iftar, um, allies and, and friends and partners were welcome to come. Um, and we had like, 30 people there, which was beautiful. Um, yeah, and and that being said, like anyone and everyone is welcome to come to our, our space as long as they come with the um, acknowledgement that, um, that that space is specifically for queer Muslims and no one is coming with the intention of, you know, <laughs> debating um there are specific spaces for that um you know specific times for that um and and you know I'd be open to facilitating that kind of thing too but 
you know, for the most part, it's just support, love, community, show up. You are definitely welcome. Well, thank you for that. I wish I only lived closer, but I would encourage anyone else here to, you know, support the community by just showing up and and being there as an ally, as a member, whatever it may be. Um, we do have a unique request in the chat box. Now you've also labeled yourself as a poet and there is an ask that you would read a poem, one of your poems for us. If, I mean, totally gonna put you more on the spot than you already are, but I don't feel bad about it. And I don't think the person who asked the question feels bad about it. So if you wouldn't mind, would you, be so kind as to read us one of your poems. I would love to read a poem for you. Um, let me, I have my thesis sitting right here. I'm going to grab it. Ah, it's a, it's a blurry, but this is my thesis. Um, I graduate in two weeks with my MFA, <laughs> inshallah. Um, Put together a whole little book. Um, yeah. Um, let me let me find a poem to read. Should I read a queer poem? <laughs> I feel like that might be that might be um that might be good. Okay. You yeah. pick away, pick whatever one is calling your name tonight. Queer poem it is. <laughs> okay. This is called Awakening. When I was 19, I met a woman. Our eyes met for the first time, sitting next to each other, praying in the masjid. Everything about her was petite, porcelain face, hesitant half smile, delicate hands, small feet. Next to my large features, she was a little American girl doll, and something within me stirred alive. A waking dragon, hungry. I wanted to fit her smallness inside of me. Fold it up like a piece of origami and tuck her into the deepest crevices of myself. Like a buried treasure I alone discovered and needed to help to keep safe. Play with this beautiful, precious doll and keep her tininess all to myself. For the first time in my life, I wanted to explore and inhale every ounce of another girl. Her tiny, perfect body, beauty, and being. I wanted it all. We spent every moment together. She wanted me to, trying to win my heart by hiding cartoon drawings of cats on little post-it notes all over my things. At night, we held each other tight, bodies wound together like braided hair arms and legs glued, her head buried in my chest. I rested my face in her curls, breathing in the sweet smell of vanilla and potpourri, clean laundry and tangerine. 10 years later, she still smells the same. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can't believe I read that. <laughs> it was very beautiful. You had a lot of compliments, I think even before the oh. poem ended people are either very familiar <laughs> with your work <laughs> oh thank you all i have some poems up um if you follow me on instagram you can you can see where they're published but hopefully inshallah my goal is to get this little manuscript published within the year inshallah oh, fingers crossed inshallah inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> any other questions or comments from those um in the audience uh you are more than welcome to unmute yourself and and ask away we are at welcoming, non-threatening group, I feel like. And so any question is welcome. Either about, you know, this topic or the series or anything else. Oh, somebody said, loved your poem to my daughter. Thank you. That was like one of the first poems I ever wrote. Thank you so much. And also the um, Sadia said that there's the annual event called the Interfaith Pride Service. Actually, last year, I read a poem at the Interfaith Pride Service um, in Austin about queer Muslims. Um, I should have read that one. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that, that's a lovely place to be and find community. 
And thank you so much, everyone, for your compliments. I'm like going through all the comments now. A very gracious audience we have today. And Afia also suggested a book here called, um, she, she hasn't read it all yet, but what she has read so far, she really liked, it's called Hijab Butch Blues. And I believe that's a recent release, recent-ish, or how old is that book, Afia? Or maybe Isra, if you know. A couple months. I actually um, live in the like, queer district of San Francisco, the Castro. So like it was at the um, local bookstore. Okay. Uh, because I want to say, yes. So we at Muslim Space um, have a relationship with Penguin Random House just on some book purchases. And our contact there had reached out and said, would you like a free copy of this book? And so we have one in the Muslim Space Library for anyone um, local to Austin. If if you'd like to check it out, feel free to send us an email and, and we can get that over to you. Um, but so thank you for reminding me of that book, Afia. Was there someone else that had a question? I think that I may have cut someone off. Zainab? Hey, I just wanted to really thank Isra. You're about to graduate. You must be extremely busy to take out present with such beauty, dignity, and courage. I'm just blown away and extremely grateful and just very, very thankful. Thank you, Zaino. That is so sweet. I'm like, I'm not going to cry on Zoom. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I have a comment too. Thank you so much, Isra, uh, for enlightening us. Uh, this is Sabine. <laughs> so, uh, and my question is to you and in general, to the entire audience, uh, and I need advice. I need your help and help me understand. Um, I know this young girl, she may be 16 or maybe older, I don't know. And so she identifies herself as LGBT, but she, and she also has some mental uh, disorder, which is like, and I'm forgetting what the disorder is called. It's like when you have a, lot of um, personalities within you. Uh, see, just slipped out of my mind the name. So a situation like this, how can I help that young girl? Hmm. Uh, it's like she has, a, what is it called? She has different uh, personalities within her and each, plus she identifies herself as the LGBT. Hmm. So she's... Um, and of course, getting acceptance from the family, from people around her. Uh, what do you suggest? How can I help her? Yeah, um, thank you for your question, Sabine. Um, I would say when it comes to, you know, specifically, uh, whether it's like borderline personality disorder or, you know, whatever it is, uh, schizophrenia, multiple personality disorder, whatever it is, I think M that... multiple personality disorders. Yes, yes. She has different. Uh... I see. I'm just. I'm short of words right now. I can't okay. think. Sorry. You're good. Um, I'm. I'm no no psychiatrist or professional in any regard, and so I would say that that when it comes to any type of mental health um, issues, that that um, just defer to you know their psychiatrist you know encourage them to see a psychiatrist um or you know even like a therapist as well um a psychologist whoever because that is you know it's um you know you can support someone and be there for them but when it comes to um mental health I mean I you know I see a psychiatrist myself um and that really needs to be destigmatized but um yeah, I think um, encouraging them to, to see a professional, a licensed professional, um, is definitely a good start for that. Um, um, and in terms of them being queer, um, I think just being there for them, you know, just letting them know that they, that you accept them for who they are, um, that you don't judge them, that you are there for them. Um, right. Yeah. She doesn't live in Austin area. She lives in Texas, but somewhere else. So uh, she's struggling. And like, again, I said, she's just 16. She's young. Uh, but, you know, being in a, in a Muslim family, it's double the struggle. 
Mm, definitely, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when mental health is so stigmatized in our communities. Right. right. Yeah. I did bring her home uh, for a week and then she went back to her house. But uh, like like you said, I mean, I was just thinking if anybody in the audience has any ideas how I can support her. Yeah, uh, Sabine, first of all, you, you know, it's, not, it's unsurprising to me that you would open up your home and your heart to mm -hmm. someone who is struggling in, in any way, because I know that that's the kind of person you are, mashallah. Um, in, in terms Thank of you. resources, I think there's a network um, of Muslim therapists, mental health therapists, that might be a go-to place for some guidance. And I will be happy to... Um, look into that and connect you to somebody who could, you know, then again, recommend some resources and possibly a therapist or a psychiatrist for this, this young girl. So um, offline. That would be helpful. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And as well, I really enjoyed your poem to my daughter. I have three girls myself, so maybe I can. Oh relate with it <laughs> yeah thank you I feel like you're so so talented oh thank you oh goodness thank you you guys are all so sweet <laughs> thank you Sabine any other uh, I, yeah. this is Sadia I was just gonna say as um, a member of Muslim space I would love to invite you guys to join our events um, I mean that is one of our um, I guess strength is that we are an inviting inclusive space. And so I know you said that a lot of Islamic Muslim community happen to exist in the mosque. And so this is an alternative inshallah. So welcome. Uh, I welcome your participation in our future events, inshallah. Thank you, Sadia. And also I will say that, you know, I prayed a prayer just this past Eid al-Fitr at Muslim space and it was lovely. I, you know, I haven't been to a masjid in a while and Muslim space has definitely been somewhere in Austin that like, I feel like I can show up as Muslim as I am. Um, so I appreciate that. I like that. Maybe that should be our new tagline. Show up as Muslim as you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, just you can, you can, you can take that copyright. All right. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you so much. I'm glad I, you I just wanted to say thank you for your presentation. Also, this is Samina. It's a, you know, it's kind of timely too because during Ramadan, I was going through a lot of YouTube videos and things like that, and was actually quite disturbing to see some of the comments that were made towards the LGBTQ community, and also from some of the progressive scholars here in the US. So it's pretty timely that this presentation is happening. So thank you for to Muslim space for providing this platform. But since we were also talking about the countries, um, I find it very fascinating that Iran, obviously being very strict towards the LGB part, but actually allow transgender surgeries, which is always very fascinating to me. And I do not know if uh, any of you had any comments on that. I um I had read recently that um contemporary Islamic jurisprudence <laughs> that was that was the term um allow for some people some scholars allow for um transgender gender affirming surgeries and that kind of thing um but like that's where it stops um and I'm not sure what the 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 thought processes behind that. Um, I guess it's a good step in the right direction for sure. Um, but it's not totally where we need to be. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's definitely a step in the right direction, I would say. There is a so much diversity um within the Muslim world within the last 1400 years of of the Muslim world, right? And I think oftentimes we don't realize that. We think it's been clear cut, black and white, one straight streamline from, you know, 610 AD to 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we would do ourselves a disservice if we thought 
that narrow-mindedly about our beautiful, our beautiful religion and our beautiful community and on all the diversity that we have within it. Um, and I just, I just want to say thank you for uh, for teaching me. I'm an old woman, but I did not um, grow up with any of this. I grew up in Pakistan, and it, this was just not even heard or talked about. Mm. Till I became an adult and came here, and uh, actually, a very close friends of ours have a daughter who wanted to be a, a boy, and that is when I found, oh my God, is this a reality? It it was really, and then you coming out and talking, oh my God, you very brave. That's very brave, and I'm still learning. And thanks to Shadia for opening my eyes to so many different things. Thank you, Vita. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you, Auntie Nisreen. Always, always thank you for your support and your encouragement and your um, partnership in, you know, this journey that we are all on. Narisha. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry, I didn't know how to use my phone. Um, so, so I'm tuning to this from the Prophet Mosque. I saw to salam. Oh, I had the class so here. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Give and, him um, my, please, please give him my salam. Absolutely, inshallah. And my friend next to me, she was like, what would they do to you if they knew that you're tuning in to this session mm. from the Prophet Mosque? Um, <laughs> I don't want to imagine what would they do to uh, to me, but also like in other communities, even in the Western countries, it's just scary to show your identity, right? Uh, and sometimes I just go to the prophet and I whisper to his dome, like, hey, do you see what they're doing to us? Where? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I recall when I saw you in person for the first time, we were doing the molded commemoration together uh, and you were singing and reading your beautiful poems and of course absolutely one can be queer and a muslim jazakallah mm. thank you thank you nurisha thank you for that um uh any other final comments before we close out i just wanted to say that not only can one be queer and muslim but I feel like I have learned so much from a certain person belonging to that community who is my teacher, is my spiritual guide. I have no to express the impact this person has had on my spiritual life. So there is, I mean, I feel like that's just completely out of the question to even consider that. Can you be Muslim and queer? It's, there's, the spirituality is not even, I feel like, I wish people could understand this better. And mm. inshallah, they will. Inshallah. I hope so. Time are a changing. Inshallah. You know, we must have faith in our, in our world, in our people, in our community. Um, whether we see that light or not, I think it's important to have that faith. Um, and at the end of the day, being a Muslim, having that relationship with God is greater, is bigger, is higher than any worldly label we could put on ourselves. And I think if we focus on that, then inshallah, the world will be a better place. Mm -hmm. We will be better people. Our community will be better. And most importantly, our connection to our creator will be better. Um, and it must start with conversations like this. And so I truly appreciate you, Isra, taking the time out of your very busy schedule <laughs> um, to share your insight and enlighten us with your wisdom. Uh, as Sadia said, I hope that this is a, um, a, a, a not, not the beginning, because we've already begun, right? But I hope that this is a strengthening bond, uh, a moment that we can strengthen our bond of our communities so that we can become one community of loving, accepting, um, divinely connected human beings who call themselves 
Muslim. So mm -hmm. thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing your evening with us. I don't know, I'm not on this committee. I don't normally run this program. So I don't know when the next session will be. Usually I spend this time introducing the next uh, uh, session, but if anything, check out our website, um, join our mailing list, get on our WhatsApp channel to be in the know of what Muslims face and inshallah, our partnerships with other organizations have in store for you all. With that, I bid you all adieu. Have a great evening. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.